If you're anything like I was when I was first starting out, you probably have no idea where to start when it comes to shooting and log. You might be overwhelmed with exposure, gamma curves, and color grading LUTs. Well, no need to worry because today I'm gonna give you a comprehensive guide on how you can start shooting and log in four simple steps. Please consider subscribing to see weekly helpful videos like this, but let's get into the first step. So step one is to actually adjust the picture profile. All you really need to do is go to the picture profile and change it from standard or neutral, which is probably what you're already shooting on, to log. Now there's a couple different log options depending on which camera you have. For Canon cameras, there's C-Log, C-Log 2, and C-Log 3. C-Log 2 actually has the most dynamic range, while C-Log 3 and C-Log have a little less. For Sony, there's S-Log 1, 2, and 3, and S-Log 3 has the most dynamic range, while S-Log 1 and 2 have slightly less. So my recommendation is to always shoot the most dynamic range possible, so C-Log 2 or S-Log 3, but feel free to do some research on your own and shoot in whichever one of these you want. I honestly don't know too much about the Sony Logs because I've shot on Canon my entire life, but the basic principles from this video should be the the same across both camera brands. So step two is viewing your footage. So now we have the log setting turned on and you're probably looking at a grayed out image with no contrast or saturation. So obviously this is gonna be very hard to monitor your footage looking at this grayed out image. You can't tell exposure or white balance very well and also it's hard to tell your focus. So you have a couple options here. First of all, most cameras have something called an LCD LUT or view assist. All this view assist is doing is basically taking that log image and applying a Rec. 709 conversion LUT so that you're able to look at the Rec. 709 image instead of the grayed out log image. Another option is to load a LUT onto your external monitor, which is what I personally do. I have an Atomos Shinobi and I load my C-Log2 to Rec. 709 conversion LUT onto the monitor. I personally like this option because this is the exact LUT that I'm using to color grade my images, so this way I can be certain that the image I'm looking at on my monitor is going to be the same that I'm color grading in my editing software. However, if you don't have an external monitor, the built-in conversion LUT is definitely good enough to get the basic idea of your white balance and exposure. And lastly, if you want to, you can definitely leave it in log and not turn on the view assist. I definitely know some people who like looking at the log image to gauge their exposure. Um, however, again, I think if you're just starting out, I highly recommend doing the conversion so that you're able to look at it and judge exposure and white balance visually. So step three is exposing. So now you have log turned on and are looking at a Rec. 709 converted image. And then next is by far the most important part, which is learning how to expose log. So exposing in log is definitely tricky because if you do it wrong, you can introduce a lot of noise into your image. So there's a couple steps to make sure you're paying attention here. The first step to exposing is knowing your camera's base ISO. Base ISO is basically the ISO level where your camera is going to produce the cleanest image with the least amount of noise. It's also gonna have the most dynamic range at this value. For example, my Canon C70's base ISO is 800, while for example, the Sony FX3 has a dual base ISO of 800 and 12,800. So just look up what your camera's base ISO is, most likely it's either 400 or 800, and then you always wanna try to keep your ISO at this level. So if you need to make any changes to your exposure, change it using the aperture or ND filters. Try to not touch the ISO unless you really need to. If you go lower, say to 600 or 500, I'm going to lose a couple stops of dynamic range. And then if I go higher, I'm going to introduce unnecessary noise. So again, make any changes you need to the aperture or ND filters and try to leave the ISO alone. And then the second step to exposing is understanding the tools available to help you measure your exposure. The most basic tool is the one we already covered, which is just looking at a converted Rec. 709 image. Um, in most scenarios, you should be able to just look at your converted image and tell if it's properly exposed. Um, this is a great way to do it, especially in ideal lighting conditions where there's no glare and you're able to really look at the image closely and dial in the exposure. However, However, you can run into some issues here if your monitor is too bright or you're outside and there's a glare. So I highly recommend learning these two tools called waveform and false color. They give you an objective measure of your exposure. So first is false color. False color basically just makes each different brightness value of your image a different color. So for example, 10 IRE, which would be a shadow, is purple or blue while skin tones would be pink and gray. And then anything that's blown out or too bright is yellow and red. 
This is a great way to quickly tell if you're losing any detail in the highlights or the shadows by just toggling this on and seeing if there's any purple or red in the image. A lot of times it's really hard to tell by just looking at the LCD. So I highly recommend using this to check your exposure. And then the other tool is the waveform. It's basically just a graph with all of the IRE values. In my opinion, the waveform is great just to make sure that you have a balanced image. You want the waveform to kind of be clumped in the middle so that you have room for the highlights and shadows to come back down in post. And then in terms of specifics for using this, um, depending on the camera, you have different IRE values that should be assigned to different parts of your image. So for example, Caucasian skin tones normally should lay around 45 to 50 IRE. Um, this would correspond to the middle of the waveform or in false color, it would be pink. So get to know these different values. And then when you're looking at your false color or waveform, you can cross reference these values to whatever is in your image. So for example, say you're filming a basketball game and your subject is a Caucasian person. And if he is mostly pink and gray, then that means you are most likely properly exposed. This is just a great way to quickly check your exposure. Again, to reiterate, do not make changes to your ISO. You should change first your ND filters and then your aperture as needed. Keep your ISO at the native base ISO. Then the final step is color grading. So I'm not going to share a full tutorial on this because there's a lot of nuance to color grading in log. However, the basic premise is to take an adjustment layer and add your conversion LUT to the very top and then make any changes you need to the exposure or colors underneath that. This is important because you wanna make the changes to the image before it is being compressed into Rec. 709. If I were to first convert on the bottom layer and then make changes on top, I'm making changes to a much smaller color space, meaning I'm gonna lose bit depth and overall just lose a lot of room to move around my image. Let me know if you want a more in-depth color grading video for log footage specifically, um, but I hope this overview kind of helped. So just to recap, you need to first turn on log in your picture profile settings, turn on the conversion LUT to view your image, set your ISO to the camera's base ISO, utilize the exposure tools of false color and waveform to get an objective look at your exposure values, and convert properly back to Rec. 709 in your editing software. So I hope this guide helped you get started in shooting in log. Please let me know if you have any questions and thank you guys for watching.